kill this guy because they can hold this guy in contempt, you know, um, uh, the, the lawyer, and they can even give him a court-martial and take away his ability to practice law in the Navy. Mm -hmm. You know, just because he dishonored a, a, a decorated officer. So you get, a lawyer has to be very careful what they do if they don't have any evidence behind it, right? So, but we can prevent, provide that to everybody out there. And we can say, this is the motivation of this judge. This is where you fill in the blanks. You can say that the motivation of the judge is because they had financial interest in this thing. They have a conflict of interest for many different reasons. We talked about the Burger King bailout. We talked about the chase, the chase and the, and, and the whole thing that they had a vested interest in seeing that, like we said before, that, that the Jew gets thrown down the, down the well, right? She has a financial gain to this. Now, even if she didn't do it for those reasons, it is a motivation and it has the appearance of impropriety. And based on that alone, she should have recused herself. And then, and then we talked about last week how she shows up at the, at the Court of Appeals. What was she doing in the building that day? How did she swing that around, right? And now she's sweet talking them again. Right, so she's like, shouldn't I have been in the building that day? She shouldn't have had contact with those those lawyers. Okay, go ahead. You want to interject? Yeah, folks, the danger is real. From oh, so Ireland, we're, we're done. We're done with the. From Ireland, the land of geniuses like James Joyce, Oscar Wilde, and Bono. Are we done with the Rubushkin thing? Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that, you just killed the whole thing. We can come back to it. But right. I need to share this important story. Okay, go ahead. Story: of This forty-three-year-old <laughs> woman, she encountered a man in a bestiality chat room and then met him at his house in Limerick Island. She proceeded to have sex with his Alsatian dog. Then she had a severe allergic reaction shortly afterwards, possibly from the dog's semen. She later died at the hospital. Oh, she, they should use a condom. So folks, like you want to get it on with a dog like many of our viewers do, don't start out with an Alsatian, start out with a Chihuahua. Work your way up. And like, make sure that you're not allergic to dogs before you do this, or dog semen. So like, you can use a condom, condom. or get tested for, for allergies. And uh, apparently the dog owner, Sean McConnell, is charged with buggery for ordering the dog to commit the act. So buggery is still crime in, on the books in Ireland. What's buggery? Um, Never heard of it. That's when you order a dog to mount some woman. So McDonald is thought to be the first person charged with this crime since it was act enacted in 1861. People, the danger is real. Well, so I, I, I just want to be uh, see the person who is able to get the condom onto the dog. <laughs> I want to see how that goes. So Moses, he got to taste the sublimity of God's kiss. And have you ever tasted the sublimity of God's kiss? Okay, so that reminds me of the first time that I really learned to kiss. It was January 1st, 1983, a sugar bowl night. When you finish the story, I have something to talk about that day. Before you go to the next thing, I okay. want to talk about that okay. day. Okay, so I was at this party and I watched the sugar bowl, Penn State won. They beat Herschel Walker in Georgia, 27-23. Then I kind of went up in the loft with this ninth grader I just met. She was blonde and she had a really tight body. I was an 11th grader. And her, her, and a mutual friend of ours, uh, another girl. So I was up there, I was talking to this blonde for about an hour, and then I like leaned over and kissed her. I think she was wearing lip smackers. She had like shiny, sweet tasting lips that smelled really good. And this is the girl who taught me how to kiss. This is only the second girl I've ever t kissed. And she showed me how to do it. Cause the first one, I'd like, I kind of put down my cheese sandwich and she leaned over and just like stuck her tongue right down my mouth. I was like, <laughs> so this is what I was like for like 10 minutes of like, you know, hardcore French kissing. This one, this blonde though, the second time I ever kissed a girl, she was much more subtle. She like paid attention to just like, you know, gliding her lips over my lips and she just like gently nibble on my lips. She didn't just like stick her tongue like right down my throat. No, oh, it's, and so, it's just so wrong. Every woman <laughs> since this girl that I met on January 1st, 1983 has benefited from all the instruction that I got from this girl on how to kiss. So uh, I just wanted to share that. Go ahead. You had a story Very nice from story. January 1st, 1983. Yeah, it's also memorable. I mean, like, you just put it there, that date. And I was like, why would he do that? Because that's a very uh, auspicious day for me. Mm -hmm. For me, it wasn't the Sugar Bowl. It was the Rose Bowl. Mm. And it was UCLA against uh, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And um, big game. UCLA was won. On Did you go on Shabbos? No, no, no. 
Okay. But it was a big game. Okay. And uh, January 1, the day before, I made a New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm never going to drink again. Oh. I'm never going to drink again. And what do you think I did while watching the end of that game? But it was on Shabbos. At the end of the game. Oh, okay. Uh, you had a drink. I had a drink. And that was the last drink you ever had? That was the last drink I ever had, lady. I had a drink. Wow. I had a drink. And because I couldn't stop, even though I said I'm never mm -hmm. going to drink again, mm -hmm. and it wasn't like I got drunk or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just that, uh, whatever, somebody offered me a drink, mm -hmm. you know, watching the other game kind of a thing, and uh, I said, okay, why not? You know, I couldn't say no. And that was when I realized that <laughs> I, got a real, I got a real drinking problem. I can't stop. Mm -hmm. And then I went to an AA meeting, like, two days later. Because somebody had, who I knew was going to AA, and I said, take me to the next meeting. It was like two days later or something. And uh, that was that was when I started. That was my last drink I ever had. It was January 1, 1983, during the Rose Bowl. Hmm. Did you ever play Seven Minutes in Heaven? I never even heard of that. So that's where you're at a party, and like two people uh, kind of paid off, and they're put in a closet, and you can do anything you want for seven minutes. How come I never got these opportunities? Yeah, I never either. I never even heard of it until a couple of years ago. So I kind of feel... Yeah, you know, I was watching some show on um, on Showtime, and, and, and they had like a blowjob party, and each... Mm -hmm. it's, it's called a, a lipstick party or something, a rainbow party. Huh. And like each girl has a different uh, lipstick, a different uh -huh. color. Uh -huh. Okay, and then at the end of the party, you want to like show your, your, your penis, and you should have like every colored lipstick on your penis. Did you go to any parties? No, I never heard of these until I watched I never the show on Showtime. Which and I'm show like, was this? I forgot the name of it. I want to watch it. When you remember, email it to me. Ah, I can't remember the name of this show. But, um, it'll, it'll come to you. So you yeah, can maybe. It to me. I can tell you who was in it. Who was in it? Uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, Hank... Uh, Hank Moody? Was it, no, was it Hank Azari. Hank, Hank Azari. Huh. Gazzara. Huh, Hank Gazzara. Something like that. Huh. Hank, I want to, I want to find that show. Uh, yeah. How do you spell his last name? I don't know. <laughs> but, but you probably. It's a Showtime show. It was when I had Showtime five, six years ago, seven years ago. Or wow, something. a rainbow party. Like, did you ever play Doctor when you were a kid? Uh, no, I never. I missed out. Hank, on all. Hank Azaria. Azaria. That's the guy. Okay, Hank Azaria. So, that guy there. Yeah, he was the star of the show. Whoa. Okay, so. About uh, five years ago. So five was it, years ago. On, uh, on, the uh, Batman, Run Fat Boy, Run. No, no, no. It's the it's, Grand. It's, Huff? Huff? Huff. Huff. I gotta see this. It's called Huff. It was on. Wow. Uh, it was on. Um, Showtime. Yeah, he was a shrink on. Um, was it a good show? And it's his son who went to the party. Was it a good show? It was a great show. I like that show. Okay, I want to find. It. And I stopped watching because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have Showtime anymore. Uh, Did you? But you never got to play Doctor. Oh, it was either. only on until two thousand and six. So I never got to play Doctor either. Nah, I never, I never played Doctor. I never played Spin the Dreidel, whatever they call it. Uh, spin the bottle. Spin the bottle. I never played uh, any of these things. I never, I never had that kind of fun. Huh? No, I, I had a very uh, sheltered life. Yeah, me too. Okay. Can a reformed synagogue ever get too gay? We talked about that extensively early on the show. But like, look, look at Beth Chaim Hadashim. It's got yellow, it's got purple, it's got another shade of blue, purple. Oh, that's a stretch. Purple. Oh, come on, that's a stretch. And it says it's raining mensch. I can... Is that, that too gay? Or not gay enough? That's a stretch. I can show you the same color patterns that you love. I mean, you know, big deal. Why were you walking out of this building at... 8 o'clock this morning. Why were you... The only reason why you noticed is because you were checking out my ass no, again. I was dropping Why were you off, checking out my ass? I was dropping my car off to get fixed. Oh, okay. And I saw you, you walking were out, out with it. You were watching with my ass. And, and, and a big smile. No, you were checking out my ass That's again. disgusting. That's <laughs> okay. Halila. Hat him the hero. Oh, you always have to bring it back to sex. <laughs> okay, should we restore polygamy? Jerusalem Post reports new organization. Are you going to read this whole thing? It's no, just the first paragraph. Okay. Trying to reinstate polygamy into mainstream Orthodox Judaism. It's a Jewish solution for the abundance of single women, the Arab demographic threat, and the male predicament of seeking extramarital relations. 
Okay, can I 